I'm Matt Crawford with SMB Capital, and today I'm going to go over with you a playbook trade made in NEO, an electric vehicle company. This trade involves looking at the entire electric vehicle sector to see how all the stocks are moving in tandem to help give more conviction when executing in a specific stock such as NEO. So using the pre-market technical levels, the intraday tape, and the overall sector's movement help gives greater conviction to make an opening drive long trade that I can't wait to share with all of you. So like we said, this will be an opening drive playbook in the electric vehicle um, space. Those haven't been hot at all. Yeah. <laughs> they haven't been in play at all. I don't, what are those? What are those stocks? We've been trading those oh, every day around the desk. Tesla, Neo. What's that other crazy stock we trade? PDEV? Uh, Tesla, Neo, XPEV. Um, XPEV. LI. Yeah, there's LI, a couple of yeah. them. So big reason these are such attractive names is they have elevated our vol usually two, three, four times um, the, the amount than usual. And then on this particular day, they had strong pre-market ranges with a lot of volume that you could really use as uh, pre-market risk levels. Um, so you'd be able to enter when you see these pre-market levels really hold on the bid and really uh, reverse to the upside. Let me just explain why, you know, sometimes we don't remember like all of the symbols. So our job is to be moving around to the stocks that are in play, the stocks that have elevated volume, the stocks that are really moving around. And a lot of times we sort of get caught. We're not fundamental analysts. That's not how we trade. There's a lot of different ways to trade, but the way that we trade is we find the stocks that are moving. We find the stocks with elevated volume. And a lot of times we have to sort of learn a stock or a sector on the fly or pretty quickly or may not even have the full picture and price and volume is is leading the way for us. All right, Kilomat, what do you got? All righty. So big reason on this day specifically that we were trading electric vehicles was we had a really large gap up in the market. Because heading into 2021, there's a lot of expected fiscal monetary policy and then just the positive market news and gap up overall. Just EVs have been really in trading in line with that. And then there's just continued optimism that the COVID vaccine will be able to be distributed throughout 2021. So that's helping um, money flow back into the markets as we're seeing a lot of terms like recovery, rotation, and things like that with people trying to get back involved and search for where new profits could be on the year. And EVs look like a really um, attractive space for trading profits. I think they've caught a bit a little bit because of Biden winning and this, the Senate turning Democrat. Uh, the thought is they're going to be more sympathetic to uh, these uh, energy plays, these alternative energy plays. And so that is another reason they're catching a bit definitely if biden's like build back better plan really brings back a lot of or brings in a lot of new energy jobs and a lot of money into that sector that, that only boost uh, the electric vehicle companies higher so looking on the day these were the three main uh electric vehicle companies i was looking at neo was the one i executed in however my other charts had tesla and li on them as well and a big thing to look at on this screen is kind of comparing the RVOL on the day, their short floats, and their institutional ownership. So you can see NEO had the highest RVOL, so this tells me if I'm going to trade any of these that it may potentially have the largest chance of outsized moves, which is what we're looking for. Um, has a little bit higher of a short float than the other two as well, which can uh, lead to short squeezes and then... Also, it does have a 36% institutional ownership, so you keep that in mind for potentially how far something can trend if funds need to really be repositioning. And in this one, there can be a lot more um, knee-jerk reactions and a lot more movement in price action because there isn't as high of an institutional ownership really weighing down the stock one way or the other. So, yeah, just keeping an eye on the relative volume in the whole sector and kind of Picking which one looks best to you based off a lot of those variables. 
If you want to learn three more real-world setups that our traders use, including the simple setup that we teach all of our new traders, and the setup that turned one of our traders into a seven-figure big money earner, check out the free webinar that we're currently running. Just go ahead and click the link that should be appearing now at the top right-hand corner of your screen. That will open up the free registration page in a new window, so don't worry, you won't lose this video. You can also visit tradingworkshop.com to register for this free intensive workshop. You're gonna learn more in a couple of hours from this trading workshop than from years of online education. So here's Neo and some of the technical reasons why I also liked this trade. Um, this $50 level had been resistance on the daily and we had finally been gapping kind of above this level, as you can see here, after prior month, month and a half of basing below 50. So you can see in the pre-market, we had this gap up over 50, consolidation underneath hold, and then a really large push higher. So this is what we were looking at in the pre-market when I came in, and I'm putting together my pre-market plan. I'm saying, okay, I see... This $50 area from the previous day and then the pre-market was an area of contention trading above and below and then this 50 50 kind of top of the range found some buying and volume and then kind of topping out around this 50 on 20 so I'm keeping these levels in mind off the open when we trade around them and how they could possibly react so we can just see again intraday on NEO on the one minute but now I'm gonna show you the intraday one minute chart of the other electric vehicles you can see how they're similarly correlated on the day and what's looking stronger so you can see this is a very clean strong chart on neo um, tesla very similarly held its pre-market range tested the bottom and then very strong open so that's another catalyst in your favor um, li took a little bit longer to break out but this one ended up looking almost like the strongest on the day as you can see, just a clear uptrend after the buying on the open. And then the final one that was a little bit choppier but did work its way higher that we had on watch was XPEV. So, so Kilomat, which one were you trading and why are you watching all these other stocks? Right. So I was trading NEO because it had the elevated, more elevated ARVOL clear pre-market range levels to trade. So why are you watching all these other stocks like Tesla and LI and XPEV? Why not just watch NEO? So something that I've learned trading at the firm and trading with the guys is that using a basket of stocks to see how your idea is playing out can be really pivotal in getting stronger trade conviction. So if I'm watching NEO and LI and XPEV, and I see off the open that not only NEO is getting some buying, but Tesla is and LI. And if they're all getting bid up at those same times, then there might not just be an idea in this stock, but it might also be an idea in the sector. So it might be a little bit of a sector rotation if all the EVs are getting bought up. And that's going to give me a little more conviction to maybe hold my trade longer if Tesla's still really strong. Or it's going to give me more conviction to get larger if I'm already seeing the other... Uh, electric vehicle companies breaking out and holding up while the one I'm in is still basing, that might give me a little more um, conviction to get involved in the stock there. So you can think of these other stocks as like a check in your favor, essentially. Another, another way to be convicted about if your idea for the stock and the overall trend in the sector could be correct on the day. Get long if the others are strong. Yeah, there you go. I like that. It's definitely kind of what we're we're thinking on a morning like this. The other thing we're looking at is we're checking to see, hey, what's the RVOL in the other names in the sector as well? Right. So the other sectors or the other stocks had elevated RVOL, but not quite as much as NEO, which was another reason NEO was um, my top watch. So the tape is really going to be the best way to see how this trade played out. But here's a chart of my trade management. So... We're going to watch this 5120 level. Look, and if I could just jump in here, yep. this is an excellent best practice, an excellent technique if you're trading a sector that's in play. And we could swap out the EV sector for the retail sector or the marijuana names. And you can do the same thing in other sectors when they get hot or cloud computing. 
okay, or uh, the fang names. And so, and this works, this technique works really well when you have these sectors that are that are really hot. So well done here, setting this trade up for yourself. Thank you. Yeah, so like I said, we're going to open around this 5120 level in the pre-market, and we're going to just see as the bids try and give out, they just keep getting uh, bought back up, and we just really hold the tape at this 5080 area. So you can see on this bottom left chart is the one minute of NEO with the times and sales in the bottom center. And then the top right I had XPEV, which was another one of the EVs that we talked about and showed on the day. And then on my other chart next to this monitor, or on my other monitor next to this chart would be Tesla and the other EV names. So I can watch them all in tandem. So we're going to start out and break down to this 51 level, which you can see there's some bids holding there. It was trying to hold high in the pre-market, and I'm thinking, okay, if this opens at the top of its pre-market range and can't go right away, it might need some time to pull back and rest. And so we're going to watch these 51s get decremented. I'm thinking, okay, if this is going to be weak, this should probably get some speed and momentum to the downside. And it looks like it is a little bit here, but these 80 cents are kind of sticky in a way. You can see you get in the 70s, come right back to the 80s. Now I'm seeing if they can bid it back up again, maybe get back over that 51 area where all those um, bids decremented. I'm knowing that's still a big area of contention, that $51 now. And you can see we're really holding below this, this $51. So if we can get a good test below these lows that clearly get bid back up, that would be a great... Uh, reason to get long so like if we make a new low quickly gets bid back up and then back to 51 that's kind of what we're going to see here we break these 80 cents finally pull down to the 50 70s 50 60s which we hadn't seen before and then it just doesn't break down not much follow through tapes holding these 80 cents again buying going through on the tape i get long in here kind of seeing this upward momentum pulling up picking up so I'm long at 50, 90, risking like that low there, 50, 70, 50, 60. And see, it picks up pretty quickly in my favor, but I haven't sold any yet because we're coming into the pre-market high. And for this type of setup to really work, um, we expect this to dip and rip up through pre-market highs. So I didn't take my first sales till like 51.43, 51.60. Just sold a sixth into the pre the pre-market high saying if we do reject there but like i said still holding five sixths my position really or four fifths my position really looking for the bigger move on this um keeping the back of my mind this is a three dollar atr so if this really trends we can move up towards 54 dollars um we can see we have a lot of support levels below now to potentially have more buyers come in the volume on the morning is very drastic with opening near 10 times our vol. You can see um, huge elevated volume there on the one minute. And now this is the spot in the trade where you're kind of in the driver's seat and you're just watching how the tape's stepping up. When are we going to get a change of characteristics? Maybe some slowing to take more profits. So we're getting another extension, and I have some orders out to sell a little more in front of 52 in case tape kind of slows into this area. Just paying myself along the way, thinking there's those offers at 52 stacked up, so they're trying to hold it down there. So that's a good reason to take another little profit again when we saw those offers stack at 52 and then we don't break right through. Are you also watching those other stocks? while you're watching the tape are you peeking into hey how is xpeb doing how is tesla doing how yes. is li doing you sort of out of the corner of your eye you're you're peeking at them as you're peeking at the tape exactly so xpeb i was actually checking out the tape live and this 45 level was kind of its dip and rip level so when i was noticing getting long in neo i noticed xpeb was starting to dip and then tesla was on my other monitor and was even stronger than the other two off the open and barely pulled back and was already moving to the upside. So seeing buying an XPEV, already seeing strength in Tesla, and then seeing what I'm seeing in the tape on NEO 
kind of all team came together to help me get long in that moment um, for the reclaim of $51 and move to the upside. So now I'll skip ahead a little. This is kind of just sitting on half my shares now, seeing if we can get more breakout as we do. Um, sold a little more into this extension at 52.50. Thinking we're up about half an ATR now. Thinking, always thinking about places to add, but right now not really seeing any ad potentials. This is just kind of going vertical, so it's going to need some time. Gets its first pullback finally. And then this is definitely a crucial area to see how this first pullback after the opening drive holds. We want to see this strong up move. And then the pullback, we want to see a shallow pullback relative to the size of the total move. So maybe if it just pulls back half the move, that's, that's totally fine. This was a drastic breakout. And then we want to see lower volume in this pullback consolidation, showing that there's not as many people really selling and hitting it lower, but more just absorption and consolidation. So we can see these 5190s, 5180s are really just holding in this pullback. That would have been the spot to add. I didn't. Um, but in review, that's always really good to see how it gets its first pullback. It holds the previous breakout area, the tape slows, not much selling volume comes in, and then it quickly continues to the upside. As you can see, it makes a new high. So that's really good for me to note when reviewing my tape. Okay, I had a great trade, but how could I have been bigger? How could I have done better? And seeing how the tape held that second time at 52, kind of like how it did for me near 51, I could have had conviction to get back in, in a portion of my shares there and used it as a momentum lot into this new high, into this 53 area, which I knew is probably where it'll push next due to technicals. And then if we're going to make that full ATR move, it's probably going to break through 53, try towards 54. So we can see how we push into these highs. And just each time it's making a new high now after a consolidation, I'm selling some. I'm down to a sixth of my shares, just kind of watching how this is trending. And then here is where I eventually get out all of my shares. As we get a change of character in terms of we make a new high... And then it quickly rejects and pulls back harsher than we'd seen all day. So right in here. So you can see 5380 made a new high. Couldn't really follow through. Tried in the second minute candle to hold up to go higher. And then we're going to pull back all the way to the previous breakout area. So I'm down to only a tenth of my shares at this point. I take off more at 5337. And I have my very final portion I take out there at 53.20. When I see the tape's just really giving out, I'm expecting if we're not making a new high there, we're going to pull back at least to 53, but we've almost had a full ATR move. Uh, a pullback to like VWAP, like 52, 52.50 could still be a strong stock, but it's just not the game plan I was looking to hold through and not the risk reward I was planning for. So yeah, so that's how that trade really played out for me. Um found the slowing in the tape alongside the slowing in the tape in XPEV, the strength in Tesla and the other EVs, knowing it's a hot sector, and then just using the speed of the tape and changes in the, in the movement of the tape as reasons to portion out along the way and, and take profits. So this is what my trade execution chart looked like, just to put it a little in, in one place to make it easier to analyze. So... You can see that 50.80 was kind of the low on the morning. That was that area we kept trying to break below and got right bid back up to. Then we got long. We sold a little into the pre-market high. Sell more on new highs, new highs. New highs fail, and then tape characteristics really change, and we get a drastic pullback after making a new high and failing, kind of taking me out, out there. And this was the area I highlighted where the ad could have been, 
where we get this pullback and clear hold over the breakout highs, the pre-market highs, um, and didn't spend much time down there either. So, big thing to improve, pretty much what I talked about. Um, the pullback was very traditional in terms of what I look for in opening drive continuations. Um, it had this nice pattern, breakout, small dip, little cup, and handle upwards. Um, we saw the slowing in the tape. The volume was much lower in the pullback. There were just a lot of things that came together that could tell you there was more upside potential in this. Um, and then the other big thing to improve on is just um, in real time noticing how far this trade could really go and trying to hold longer before taking the like second and third portions of my profits like maybe this sell here and here these could have really just been held till this drastic change of character um knowing these evs have had such outlandish moves and i'll remind you what the other evs looked like on the day which were also very strong um xpev li giving me really strong conviction you can see after this based and uh same with tesla so all these looking very similar on the day and which one you execute in is can be preference based off the, the stock price, um, how it's moving, the pre-market data, um, just based off your system. But you can still use all of them in conjunction regardless of which one you're trading. Hey, go ahead and click our subscribe button so you don't miss any of the videos they're producing for you in the trading community. And please take the time to add your feedback in the comment section for what videos you'd like for us to produce next and what you found helpful from this video from all of us at SMB, train and trade well.